And we get on to some issues at hand. I mean, I really enjoy this time with you guys now. So I have to make sure that we get all the latest in. Starting with some comments from, the, do you start the waiting room, Karen? Or yeah, start, yeah, I don't have waiting room. I, I disable the waiting room. OK, great. So I, I don't have to look out for people. Yeah, you don't have to look out for anybody. OK. All right. Um, where's Linda? Linda, I'm with you, man. Mm. is not going to be here. Um, Nick Richardson is not going to be here. Um, but everybody else should be. Yeah, we're here. So yeah, let's let's get them at, at two minutes. Um, Cheryl, not going to be here either. All right. Belinda, how are you doing? Good afternoon, Mr. Maxime. How are you? Hi. I see you took a haircut. Yes, everybody. <laughs> Oh, I, don't know. I look like the topic for today. <laughs> yeah, by next week. By next week, as I said, I'll put on night by next week. So, mm. you get a chance to come in through the. Okay. Ms. Batiste, how are you? For now. Hello. All the people hiding behind pictures. Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. <laughs> yeah, well, your conscience is bothering you to Kenya, but I was talking to Ms. Batiste. <laughs> All right, we have, still have a few people missing. So, Karen, did you get that comment about the value wallet and the registered wallet? Well, I'm still trying to analyze and, and, you know, try to use critical thinking to understand what this really means. How, 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 how critical thinking? Anyhow, who's teaching it critical thinking course? <laughs> Mr. P Mr. Mr. Danny Pierre. Uh, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Well, he's my teacher, but I almost don't know him either because I just go on and log on in class, like, regular. Okay. He's a, yeah, he's a regular time CC lecture? I, I believe so because most of most of my past friends students say they did the same thing with him before. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, but this doesn't require critical this requires listening to the ECCB mm -hmm. and the rollout of the digital currency, the digital EC dollar. But apparently what they're gonna be doing is having two mechanisms for you to have digital EC. If you're not part of the banking sector, you can have a value-based wallet. It's almost like a card that they put money on, you transfer your cash EC into digital EC, and you can then use it as anybody else would use a oh. digital currency. And if you put it registered, the people who are part of the banking sector already, like yourself, will have a registered wallet, in which then you can go to your bank and decide, you know, if you want, of the eighteen thousand dollars you have in the bank, you might decide to put nine thousand in digital currency so that you can use you could then use your phone to to make payments, etc. All right, right. Well, a similar to what the Chinese system have now. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, but yeah. one of the things is that in many respects it will be a replacement of cash and not a true online tool as yet. Okay. So. One of the things that I remember a colleague telling me about, this is about 10 years ago, eh? he was saying that there will soon come a day when you could go by a coconut vendor on the side of the road and you'll be able to swipe your card and pay him. You know? And everybody laughed and then because they thought, you know, that was so far fetched. But with this new yeah, digital EC card, all you have to do is just do a phone-to-phone -phone transaction with a coconut vendor. Because mm -hmm. if he has a, he or she has a... Scanner. Digital, yeah, a, a smartphone or a yeah. smart device and has digital currency or digital wallet, then what yeah. you do is actually transfer in digital cash from your phone to his or hers. Okay. So there will soon come a time when you can roll up by a coconut vendor without any cash in your pocket. And... Uh, I think we need, I think we, need to, we really need that. Yeah. 
And, and the, the bigger implication. Mark of the beast. Mark of the beast. Just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't start that again. Eh? Don't start that again. All right. Nobody is going to put a digital print on your forehead. All right. So that's not, that's <laughs> a, not choice. a choice. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's not go there yet. Maybe come in, but let's not go there yet. Because, I mean, um, if we were to take 666 seriously, then Ronald Wilson Reagan should have been the last time that we had a 666 on the, on the planet. Good right, afternoon, so. everyone. Hi, Glenda. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. It's all right. So, are you ready to roll? User, is user Mrs. Sandy? Or somebody else with equipment that they don't know how to. Um, That's Shamsi, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Who's the who's user? <laughs> Shamsi? Shamsi, identify your user. What did I do? What did I do? It's on user, it's not on Shamsi. It's on well, user. Let me, let me make a guess up there. Hello. Well, go like that. Stay like that. No, I don't. I'm, I'm shy. <laughs> to come to class? Good afternoon, Nida, Belinda, Chanel, Good afternoon, Hello. Belinda. Kenya and Kiran. Mr. Maxime, good afternoon. Good afternoon. See, these guys couldn't keep you in your bed this morning. They were up very early. I don't know why they did this. Yeah, always, always. <laughs> At least I keep on thousand hours. I don't know about them. But... Yeah, son. <laughs> that is my excuse. You understand? I'm usually up that early, though. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the correct pronunciation of your name, Naida. Naida. My name is Nida. N A I D A. The A is silent. A. Oh, the A is silent. That is that yes. is what always throws silent. me off. Yes. So the correct pronunciation is Nida. So ignore the A. And go on the I. And just go the I. Yes. So it's neither Nida nor. <laughs> neither. 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 <laughs> You know, I can resist. If I you know, I can resist my that. name is Anita Nita Trivian Simon. Run that by me again. Anita Nita Trivian Simon. Wow. All right. Is that, is no. that supposed to be a tongue twister? So, you know, from now on, is Miss Simon. <laughs> no, sir. I would really like to hear you call me Nita. <laughs> Neither. Well, neither Nita nor Simon is going to any of <laughs> the important thing to remember is that we need her in class. <laughs> ah, okay. All right, okay, 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 okay. Okay, Nina. Nina. All right, uh, I have it now, I have it now, I have it now. Remember, it took me a long time to get Kenya right as well. Eh? I could ask Glenda a question. Please, please. Glenda, did you go to the barber today? Oops. I oh, just put all back. I'll my appointment is you know, Saturday. Listen to me. I think you are getting very slow. Did you go to the Baba today? As no? I said, stop trade words for anybody, for my please. And let's yes, okay. Nida. Nida, I went to the Baba today. Okay, yeah. I can right. see that. The Baba is... Oh, yes. the, yeah. the makeup artist you're speaking to. I thought it was me, you know? <laughs> I would like to see Belinda, please. I have not seen oh, yeah, Belinda. understand what's happening there. When I want to ask some people a question, they're directed to other persons, you know, and I'm getting caught in the middle, you know? Yeah. Not realize it. Oh my God, you apparently, got me. Apparently, everybody wants to get a G like you. Yes, yes I believe like this G is very special, yeah. you know. At, when you turn the G upside down, you see it great. You turn the next one, you see awesome. They don't understand this G. <laughs> yes, Shamsi. Steve, I would like to see Belinda. Belinda don't have her camera on, and that is illegal. You just told me to leave my camera on. Sh Shamsi, I'm always here. Hi, Belinda. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. 
care. We don't want to see here. We don't care about here. She's there. Mm -hmm. she's there. I just wanted to see the smile. That's all. All right. So now that we have that settled, Sharama. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm here. The teacher. Teacher. I'm here. Oh cool. So I look at that. that. Look at that, sir. I'm here, sir. All right. Okay, so if you guys remember, I was commenting on the fact that you all read the several documents I sent to you. So we will do a quick recap of those documents and starting with all of you guys present here, I want to hear some, I want to hear in your own words what you got from the personal branding document that you read. Ta-da! Don't all speak at once. Maybe I should ask it another way. How many of you read the document on personal branding? Hmm. I am guilty for not reading that document. Hmm. And this morning when I said that, I'm sure that you read all the documents, everybody smiled eh, and said that, you know, this. I got that kind of cue, but we had had several meetings today. I plan to read upon it. All right, all right, all right. But all right. maybe if you ask other questions, I will be surely over and ready to. All right, all right, all right. Anybody else? Karen? I think Karen disappeared. Karen is probably heading home. Um, Naida? Yes, sir. I'll Nida. take it still. <laughs> <laughs> At least I caught you this time, right? So I, I know the I know the correct pronunciation now. So but did you get a chance to read it? Good afternoon, guys. Sorry. I, 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 I did not read personal branding, but I was today I was reading on the four P's. Okay, all right, we're coming to that next, so save it. I was reading on the four P's and thing. I all didn't right, read so save, answers. save your answers for that when we come around to that. Hi, Bonnie. Okay. Hi, afternoon. I'm, I'm, I, must, I must admit, Bonnie, that um, you could have shared your experience with us. I don't know what experience. Your Facebook experience. Oh. <laughs> we are not averse to that. I mean, you know, it even if it didn't have anything directly to do with the, with the course, I mean, we want to know what's happening with our, our people. You know, that was a very interesting experience. I mean, <laughs> very interested. All right, well, let's, let's, let's take it up. I'll take it up a little later when, when everybody's on. Okay? No problem. No problem. Remind me. Yeah. All right. All right. And I suppose by, by saying that, I, I think I've just exposed that I am friends on Facebook with Mr. James. Yes. So that's, that's where I picked up that little bit of the food. So I don't think it's any special thing. It's just that Bonnie reached out to me and I accepted the friend request. Okay, so. Social media, sir. Social media. Yes. <laughs> Render. Hi, Bonnie. That oil oh, love, that oil love. <laughs> All right, so going back to the 10, to the 10 rules for the personal branding. The first one was to have a focus. Anybody remember anything about that? I remember I said that there's a transferability between the 10 rules for personal branding and the 10 rules for branding of your CSO, and that you can transfer some of these points to your CSO. Welcome back, Karen. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I'm closing up to head out. I'm closing the office, so. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know your routine. I know your routine, so that's, <laughs> that's not a problem. All right. And as I say, seeing that you're upstairs from the barber, you know, I know you had to always go back and get a fresh up, so. <laughs> yes, 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 open the bag.
the worst thing is that black people know your business right? anyhow so in terms of the 10 rules oh also that i was talking about i have my eldest that has something else you know well i mean i think i think the first well i think a basic one mm. and blend i was going sorry no go ahead i think a basic one of course is to to have a kind of narrow focus yes you know to recognize that you cannot be all things or all people and all the time and funny if you transfer that to a cso what would that translate into having a specific mission not so having a specific mission mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you keep that you that you that you that you hold on to you stick to so if the cso is going to develop a brand you want to be sure that you stay within a narrow focus stay within your lane you know if your if your mission specifies some sort of environmental management you know try to stick to that and not be all over the place and when i say all over the place i don't mean that you can't bring um experiences from commerce or from the private sector or so to play what i what you don't want to do is to lose focus and end up working on something that isn't directly related to your mission. Anytime you get involved in ancillary stuff or stuff outside of the mission, it must be with this, for the sole purpose of zeroing in your resources on your actual mission. So you may appear to be deviating if you deal with a private sector issue, but it's just to be able to bring the private sector to bear on your mission. All right? So this thing about having a having a focus if you translate that to cso operation then what they're saying is stick to your mission right i, I don't think we have I, I can't stress that any more than i've stressed it over the last what, four months since we've been since we've been operating together right over the last four months I've, that has been a consistent thing. stay focused get that mission right and then once you got it once you have it right Stick to it. Agreed. But that requires that requires humility. Yeah, yeah. That is, um, we, we, when we talk yes, about humility. humility, yeah, because remember, I said in the context of a CSO, you don't want to be going to an established CSO with a track record and tell them, you know, we bright, we here, we can fix, right? Of course, you want to be focused on raising the standards in CSOs and in, in, in data, Carico and PT Martin. But in the midst of being that focused, you don't want to be, you know, seen as not being humble. Okay. But in terms of a practical approach, though, mm -hmm. is it does it mean that the that your CSO could kind of serve as almost as a network to other CSOs? That you don't cut off people, organization, but you, you say, you know, we our, our our mission is this specific thing. However, we can help you to 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 bridge and meet the right people who are interested in what you want to do. Yeah, because remember, as we had agreed that you already are validating CSO as well, eh? in that the fact that a CSO, a local CSO, is affiliated to or working with your CSO says something. It gives them an extra for that because so just give me one minute, right? Just give right? me a minute, right? Yeah, yeah. So what happens is that you're actually endorsing, you're literally endorsing the CSO by working with them or by having your your brand associated with theirs. All right? And that happens in, in personal branding as well. So whether it's personal branding or the branding of the CSO. You want to be sure that you stay focused and as as Bonnie was suggesting that you remember to remain humble even in your personal branding right um, you want to be sure that you remain humble as well i know a number of you commented on that um on that st vincent interview right i don't think at any point anybody got the impression that i was coming off as being anything but humble right 
So the, to be humble doesn't mean that you, you're not knowledgeable or you're not experienced. It's just that you're not going, you know, blasting all over the place that, you know, that you're, you're the best thing since sliced bread. And, you know, and nothing would have been accomplished if you didn't get into the picture, right? I, can't, I challenge any one of you to suggest that I came across like that at any point. No, sir, it was very humble, you know. It's just that, you know, certain person was just trying to tease you. But you were very humble. No, and you knew I, you know, I, I, know the, I know the people who tease me. <laughs> no, I, I, know them, I know them well, right? Whether they're, um, online, whether they're online with their new equipment or not, I know them well. <laughs> so, um, going back to the, to the branding, um, if I were to recall, our, from the when I was discussing it before, I sort of browsed through the document. I think that was the one with Oprah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And I remembered we talk about um, consistency, and Vonnie would have given the example when he was in Jamaica and he wanted to dress down the day and he go with the different socks and the different belts. Right. So you need to be consistent. I remember we talk about that we have to. Um, tell a story and keep in line let the story keep in line and everybody that is involved needs to be telling the same story um let me see what else i think i recall oh we talk about i'm um, leaving the brand as well so you're not the brand eight to four and when five and the rest are part of the day you're a whole totally different person um and I think we also need to be genuine mm -hmm. in the things that we do. We have to come across genuine to the um, to our customers and the persons um, that we come in contact with. Because if we're not genuine, eventually one or we would get burnt out and lose interest, and uh, our customers in turn will realize that we are not genuine, and they would not be buying whatever it is that we sell it, no matter how we spin it. Um, let me see what else I remember. I remember to be focused. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Tisha. We, we're going to go, I'm going to go through all, all 10. Oh, right. okay. I'm going to go through all 10, but I'm, I'm glad that you know that you were able to put them in, in context. But we, we, so the first one, in terms of how it's listed in the, in the document, is to have a focus, right? And that's what we're talking about now. And I've seen that I just interrupted the flow to David Vonnie when he said that one has to be humble, okay? Now the second one, and you mentioned it already, is to be genuine. And again, remember, I only gave you this, I shouldn't say only, but I gave you this document, this website on personal branding because I saw the transferability of the of the points being made. So in the same way that your personal brand can be influenced by these 10 points, your CSO brand could be influenced by them as well. So that whereas in a personal context, you want to stay focused, in a CSO context, you want to stick to your mission. So that would be the equivalent. Okay, everybody? Yes. Right. right. So the thing about being genuine, well, of course, that I mean that We've beaten that like a horse over the, over the last couple of months, right? So you want to be genuine. You do not want to, you do not want to fake that. People are very good at reading, reading that. Yeah? If you keep saying all the right things, but you're not walking it off, people are going to figure you out. And it's usually a lot harder to, harder to come back from that, right? Yes. The third one, and, and Letitia mentioned this as well, is to tell a story. Again, come back to you know, personal context. How do you tell a story? You do interviews, you're part of a network, you, you let people grasp what your journey has been like, right? When I sat down there with, with Tony, with, uh, with Regis Fund, you know, I was telling a story of my progression, but it was a story that he was leading, right? I did not tell him, you know, um, so how come you ask me about this? Or how come you ask me about that? I just let the flow continue. He had his, you know, he had a structure in mind. And there are things that he wanted to find out about. If you know, if you remember, 
he was more interested in organic than anything else. Definitely. Majority of the interview went to talking about organic. I guess too again, so is 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 conversation communicating and the message in what relates to him. So I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and then he knew his audience, right? Remember? Yes. I'm, yes. I'm on his show, eh? He's not a That's man. right. I, I remember saying you were a host. Yeah, you know, so it was it was his show, right? Um so you want to tell a story? So I, so I have a question, huh? Mm -hmm. um, and my question is stemming from an episode of Bull that I would have looked at. I don't know if you like TV show um, series, but Bull is one of them that I like. What, what show is that? Um, um, I wonder if it was Bull. Um, no, it wasn't Bull. It was Lie to Me. It's where this... Um, I, watch, I watch that all the time. I've seen that. Oh, it Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, well, wonderful. Is it in body language and so on? Not, I'm not watching. Like right. That. So that's that's one of my shows that I I pay attention to. And mm -hmm. um, one of the episodes that I want to bring to light is the one where the lady from Africa. Who they thought that was was going to be assassinated. Oh, internet stick. Natasha is stuck. Yeah. And anyway, when she comes back, we will we'll pick that up. Yeah. But of course, you want to be consistent. I mean, we, we said that. You want to be considerate as well. And the, the one that I thought was particularly interesting is you need to be ready to feel. To be told. Oh, sorry. You're back, Natisha. Sorry. You, we lost you for a little bit. Oh, I was asking, how then, if you yourself have not experienced it, how then do you tell the story that needs to be told? Uh, that's very difficult. Unless, unless you're going based on something you learned in a text or so. The only way you can have experiential learning, by definition, is to experience it. And you can experience something vicariously, which means that you experience it by immersing yourself into the text of a, of a novel or having spoken to somebody who has been through it, right? But there are different degrees of, um, of, of a person's ability to do something like that. But usually, it is more intense, it's more, it is more arresting if the person is really speaking from actual experience. I mean, if you have... All right, let me, let me put it the other way. You can try to describe to someone your sense of fear in an earthquake, right? by watching movies on earthquakes, by having people who have been through earthquakes tell you about it. But there's a certain something that will be lacking until the day that you actually experience earthquake and you internalize that fear and you understand what that, your description of the thing is gonna change. You're gonna start thinking about, talking about, you know, the, 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 the rumbling sound first. You know, the fact that, you know, it, it took you a few seconds to, really realize hey it, no, it's, it's really an earthquake here and the fact that it always seems longer than it is that is not something that you can easily and i'm saying it's impossible you can't easily get that from a vicarious experience right it's like it's like hearing your your sister or your mother talk about childhood as a as a female right but as a woman, if you experience childhood, there are certain aspects of that event that you're going to be able to describe in more vivid, if you like, in more arresting detail than just having heard your, your mother or your, or your older sister or somebody else talk about giving birth. Are you, are you with me, Natasha? Hello. Yes, so I'm with you. I'm with you. Right? So I'm saying that you're Sorry, right. I'm just reading. I'm here. I'm listening. Yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult to, to tell this story if you haven't really you know, experienced it fully. But that is not 
that is not to suggest that yeah. only the people who are experienced it could see it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody's mic is on. I think oh, it's. Sorry. I think it's yours. It's me. It's me. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. So, so, so there's a question. Another question. So, mm -hmm. where do you draw the line in being fraudulent and in telling the story? Because. No, you can make you can make up an anecdotal. Once you say it's an anecdotal story, you can make up an anecdotal story. You know? For the purposes of teaching or explaining, you can say, what, what you're not, what you're not, what you're not really supposed to do is lie and say that you experienced it. But you could say that you know people who have experienced earthquakes say so 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 so. You're not lying, but you're using their a vicarious type of experience to describe it. It is when it is when you say I have been up to the top of the Himalayas, you know, I understand the sense of peace that um, that a monk gets. You know, that that's fraudulent. Because you know and I know you haven't been to, to the Himalayas. You haven't sat in between all those monks. But when if I come and I say look, I have been to the Himalayas sat with these monks and I have a sense of what they're talking about. Even though I may not have had the same experience as a monk, but at least I was there, right? So there are times I talk about um, experiences with indigenous peoples, right? That doesn't make me uh, an expert on indigenous people, but at least I have had interaction with uh, two or three Toshaos, right? Which is the, the, the chief in there. Amerindian chief, the broad name for Amerindian chiefs, right? So that if I start talking about that and I say, you know, my experience with the Wayaka involves so, 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 I can speak with authority about that. Because that's not something I read in a book. I was actually sitting down with them. I know how they operate, right? And the stories that, that I can tell will have a different flavor to the stories I can tell about, about American Indians. I've never sat in a power with, 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 with a chief, you know, a, a Cherokee chief or, 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 or a Sioux chief. You know, I have no idea. I mean, I would have seen movies where they pass around the peace pipe and all that, and I mean, I could make up stories on that. But I'd be fraudulent, I'd be lying if I said, you know, you know I once went to a power with, you know, a couple chiefs from the from so and so nation, from the Sioux nation or the Cheyenne nation, and this is how they operated. That's very fraudulent part comes in. But I can easily tell a story about, about American Indians just based on, you know, on my reading history, watching movies, talking to people, because I have, I have relatives who are part Cherokee and so on. So they have sat, sat around at dinner table and heard stories about Cherokee. But once I don't say that I experience it myself, that doesn't stop me from using it for anecdotal purposes. Okay? You with me? Yes, you got, sir. Uh, you got uh, that you were going to say something? No, I was just, just making the point that I, I like to listen to people. Mm -hmm. You know, all people, of course. Mm -hmm. um, because I find that people have, have valuable contribution to make that can be used in other settings. So sometimes, so sometimes if in a setting like this and I hear you say something, I will either ask directly, you know, I want to use that later, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that is to build good rapport for those kind of um, experiences. And that is, that is, that is, that is the, to me, the main reason for having a class, literally a class, as opposed to each of you sit down with a text or with some notes and come to your own conclusions with all the benefit of your colleagues interjections, and you come at the end of two months, write an exam, and pass or fail. But it would be impossible for you to write that exam the same way if you sat in a class, whether it was a virtual class like this, or an actual class, and heard the contributions from a Belinda, heard the contributions from a Sharaba, heard the contributions from a need help. Definitely, definitely. Yes, sir. Got it, he got it. <laughs> I was just so proud of myself that I got it to see that as well. Yeah?
Yes, so it's, it's always a, it's yes. always a good thing. Yeah, as I said, that that to me is the reason why you know, regardless of what frame of mind, physical state, or whatever, I mean, that I'm so energized when we have this these sessions because I realize that I want to have for us to get that kind of cross talk, what appears to be cross talk, but it's really a cross fertilization going. And we benefit, we all benefit from it because there are a lot of stuff I learned from you guys, right? Apart from how to pronounce names and so I learned a lot of stuff, right? And it is not only to my benefit, I think it's for the class benefit that we, we share these ideas, you know, we hear about people's experiences and we are all hopefully better for it. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Ms. Baptiste, you agree? I agree. No? I agree. Okay, great, great, great. You sleep away on my dad. You're looking no, very no, no. comfortable. You're looking very, very comfortable. I feel too comfortable if you ask me. <laughs> you look like you're one step away from green right And the pillow is right behind me, so if I fall, I ain't falling too hard. Is Miss Belinda with us? Yes, Bonnie. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Good to hear you. They're just trying to terrorize you about your camera. That's all. That's all right. Don't worry. I'm here. I'm here. I know my, I know my people. And my people know me. All right. So, um, see, let me say this quickly. It might be funny, but it's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I really resisted. I had a, I had a a video to do for our international organization you know be part of that video just say a little something and my hair wasn't cut man and that stressed me stressed me stressed me to the point that almost 99 percent i say you know what we, we, we can't we can't do this video without my hair without my hair cut i start off my branding so to speak right right, right. But then I say, boy, you know, in a COVID situation, they are, it's, it might be arrogant to let an opportunity like that pass. You can wear you know, you know, I can wear a cap or something. I eventually did a video. Mm. But, but, I mean, it's good to show some banding for me. It's important that, I, you know, I don't, if my hair is not proper, I don't want to take pictures and those kind of stuff and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah. even even within our, within our little small group here, you know, we have we have certain people with the initials BF who, you know, unless their brand is perfect, they're not going to come on camera. You know, we know that, right? Not so, Belinda. Um, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we also said. But sir, just before you move on it, can mm -hmm. I, I just want to speed what, what Vonnie just said. Mm -hmm. Because we're speaking of branding and um, in light of what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. persons, persons who know Vonnie know he don't cut his hair at home. He go to the barbershop to hear all the gossip and to know what's going on in the community and to kick back with the boy. <laughs> And all of a sudden, we're in COVID-19, where everybody is bushy, and Bonnie is now well-groomed. <laughs> and Let's we know child, bust your bubble. not functioning. Hold on, we know Bonnie Barbershop is not functioning. Uh, bust your bubble. Bonnie, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Does it leave question in regards to the principles and so forth that Bonnie brings forth with his brand. Mm. Well, that's exactly what technically that I, we just we are discussing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but obviously the benefits outweigh the, the negativity and so sometimes you have to take a plow. Yep, 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 
yep, yep, yep, yep, yep. Especially when you see you have that certain image and because persons have certain expectations of you and they can't view you no other way but this particular way, then, you know, I understand. But Natisha Bhani Barbershop is not, you know, the regular barbershop. Unique, I have appointments. So. I, I, have, I have no idea what you're talking about. So that I'll just leave that right there, right? Until, until Karen comes back, you know, because he's above a barber shop, apparently. So I suppose he will get his information filtering up to him, even if he doesn't go into the barber shop himself, right? He probably leaves his head down and go to work, you know? <laughs> probably, probably doesn't, too. Right? So we're saying, to, to always remember to make a, a positive impact. And I think I, I, I told you guys this story already because I mean, I've shared so much with you guys over the last four months. But you always want to leave a positive impact. And talking about positive impact, here comes Mr. K. Fletcher himself. Welcome, Kevin. Okay. Yeah, so when we're talking about making a positive impact, I mean, there are some people who make a positive impact by asking the hard questions, asking the, the questions that will provoke thought. And when I think of provoking thought and thing, I think of Kevin all the time. Because I know he likes to throw those kinds of questions into the mix to see if you really, if you really buy in the, whatever it is we supposed to be selling, whether we prepare to buy it or not. And I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so you want to make a positive impact. You want to be associated with, with positivity. Yeah? And, and when I'm saying that, I'm not just talking about, um, you don't want to be somebody who's always mama guying people and complimenting everybody. Every day you see them, you tell them you have something nice to say, unnecessarily so, you know, um, because then you're not being genuine. But you always want to have a positive impact. I mean, people, you want to be in the category of people that <coughs> persons are not upset when they see you because they know you're coming with some sad story or you're coming with some gloom and doom. You know, there are some people who, from the time they turn the corner, you know, if you only forget yourself and ask them how today was, you're going to get a whole long string of all the things that went wrong today. Ignoring the fact that I mean, they were amongst the people who got up this morning because a lot of people didn't get up this morning, right? And they would never start from there, they'd always tell you, you know, all the things that went wrong. Today. And whereas we all know that things go wrong, if your focus, if the first thing that comes to you is to tell us what went wrong, then you know, not every day will be, we'll be anxious to see it. Hi, Nicholson. Right, not every day will be anxious to see you at all. So you want to be associated with a positive impact. You don't want to be necessarily be the eternal optimist who could see, you know, the, the silver lining in every dark cloud, but you don't want to be associated with the dark clouds only either, right? Um, there are some people, I mean, personality-wise, you know, they, I mean, they, they come across heavy, you know, you, you're really, have to be in the best frame of mind to be with them you know, because if you if you are already starting to feel down and you talk to them you don't feel even worse right and it helps if you if you're not in that category as i say you don't have to be walking around smiling and saying everything perfect but at, at the same token you don't want to be the person who is always seeing the you know seeing the dark cloud in you know, the ignoring the whatever silver line in there but that, that, that requires two things. Mm -hmm. The first one I like to say is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And not as, you know, you're talking about personal branding now and, and CSO. So self-awareness, mm -hmm. how you come across, how the CSO come across. Mm -hmm. And the other one is is discipline. I don't know how you transfer that to the CSO. Well, it could be consistency. But it's more like discipline to always looking in to see how you can better produce out, whatever that is. 
Do you remember your 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 mission has a development focus, eh? and development is always associated with my favorite word, betterment. Good people. It's about betterment. It can't be about worse men. Right. It has to be about betterment. So if if you start off with that philosophy, okay, so we know things bad, okay, your business was shut down for the last four months, you know, things are really, really bad. Okay, your, your CSO didn't get any funding, they didn't appear on the radar at all because in the midst of a health scare, people are more concerned with, you know, some of those basic things, health, um, food, and if you're dealing with the environment, and you know, people might say, you know, well, you see at a time like this, me are really interested in no turtle, you know. But them turtles and them there, there's a business, right? I don't want to hear anything about turtles in the middle of COVID when people die, right? So you, you could see yourself having that challenge here if, you're, if your CSO is focused on, on, on the environment, on saving turtles and so on. But it is part of your responsibility as a CSO to show them how all these things are linked that if we took care of the environment in a different way, the water woes we're having now in the midst of the COVID-19 episode would be a lot different. The food situation that we have now in terms of local production would be a little different because it's all linked. But at a time like this, people don't see that. They're, what they're seeing is the immediate thing. You know? I mean, we should be talking about how we're saving people. I ain't wanna hear nothing about no turtle. But the thing about the turtles is not about saving the turtles, it's about saving the environment. And it's the same environment that is going to be protecting us, hopefully. And it's the same environment that we are going to have to explore, if not exploit, to get the food and everything else that we need. Because regardless of what our personal view is, we are not producers. Eh? Human beings are not producers. We don't make nothing, right? You can't, you can't stand up outside there in the hot sun and throw some water on you and you produce food, right? We don't produce that. We are takers, right? What we, have to do, what we have to do is find the right environment that we can keep taking from this environment because we are manipulating it, but we are not producers ourselves, right? And for that, we have to thank the, the plants, the plants on the plant. So, sorry, not to, go ahead. No, I was just um, going to tell you, I beg to correct you, we only produce trash. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, you know, for all you people with rubbish in your head like me, you know, just remember that we want to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Exactly. Right? So, so that just to add a little bit to what... Just if, we, if, we do it, if we do it correctly, we should have zero waste. If we do everything correctly, we should have zero waste. Because theoretically, there's no such thing as waste. If we operate a closed loop value chain, then things that we call in trash, let us assume, okay, you, you got chickens from somebody that you know during the COVID episode, right? You got some chickens, you cooked the chicken, you had scraps left over. If those scraps were properly composted, then you wouldn't have any reason to send anything up to Pussy Valentine. Right? Right? And if we were not as averse as we are to manuals from, from home, bathrooms and so, then nothing is really wasted, right? Ever. Right? Because not, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So everything is just part of our circle. It's just that sometimes our circle includes perseverance and includes burning and includes smog and includes the risk of fire and like, you know, that type of thing. So sorry, Glenda, go ahead. I just wanted to strengthen what Vonnie was saying. I know he was looking for use of a better word. Mm -hmm. And I believe he was more or less trying to wrap all what he was saying into this one word, emotional intelligence. If we are in tune with the people around us and we're, we think using this level of intelligence, what happens is we tend to know when to be you know, jovial, we tend to know when to be serious about whatever. We tend to be sensitive to people around us and their feelings, you know, and stuff like that. So and I think you know, what emotional intelligence is the key. Yeah, and to be empathetic as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because so, I also want to add... That's not funny. The, the last... When somebody is really, really, really sad and depressed, 
the last thing they want is a super happy person around them. Yes, yes. So, so you have to be sensitive to that as well. So that yes, you have to show empathy. Yes. Come across as not being empathetic. I am dumb. But not too sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I am dumb. And you are just bubbly, 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 bubbly. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm just chopping about everything will be okay. Everything won't be okay because I am in something very serious. So what you have to do is, is go to you know, empathize. You go in yes. and try to lift it up. If you think you're yeah, and sometimes as Christians we say, "Oh, we're gonna pray for you," but prayer doesn't solve everything. Well, pray, prayer could solve everything, but prayer, independent of other stuff, doesn't solve exactly. It. It's not by itself, and we have to work with action. Yeah, you yeah. must do yeah. something. Yeah. So some people just say pray and they leave it hanging, yeah, and yeah. then that's it. But it doesn't solve the situation at all. Because yeah, it I, don't I, solve everything. As Bonnie will tell you later when when we when when. When we talk, if we talk about it this evening at all, is that sometimes the person doing the praying has to come by you because not yeah. all, doesn't always work long this time. So they have to put That's some physical <laughs> effort into it, right? Yeah, and some of them are calling to the person's situation. You're not just praying, you need to, um, you know, you need to basically um, yeah. get in there and, 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 and help with something or d- direct them to the right person or, you know. But you can't just say I pray for you and leave it hanging, you know. You never can tell you might leave that person there, you might leave the person even more emotionally wrecked, you know. And the and the prayer might be to find the right doctor. So yeah. that you recognize that there's a role for men and there's a role for your 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 spiritual head, but you know, where, yeah. wherever that is. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Any other comments? I just wanted to quickly go back to what you were saying previously and connect that with messaging mm-hmm. because let's just say the environment is in is is, is in trouble mm-hmm. and in spite of the the crisis and let's just say let's just say this trouble just say the COVID crisis amalgamate or all that issue mm-hmm. I, I i still think uh, it's the We are going through this issue. Mm-hmm. We are going through this issue. But if we come alongside one another and and work together, that we can we can we can save the turtles, we can save our beaches, we can reduce the spread of uh, COVID-19. If we speak in a more uh, collective approach, even even in the midst of a deep deep crisis, I think that can bring hope to the situation and, and and just just remember that even though i use something as remote something as as turtles and beach protection do you realize that for the psychological health of the country that reopening of the beaches was a major thing of course that even though we need well sure we need a vaccine and we need food and we need medication but if we don't have access to that exercise or that ability to go on the beach and just cool out, then clearly, even if our physical health improves, our mental health may not. So right. that it's all linked, you know, and, and we, it's, just, just one planet, it's just one planet we have. It, you know, and more and more you get to see that what happens everywhere affects me anywhere. So what happens everywhere affects me anywhere. End of things, right? So that before we, you, most of you guys joined, Karen was was remark or somebody was remarking about the, the the current situation in the US. So we can always say, you know, well, you know, that is them, you know, that is them and the racism and thing. But we are all going to be impacted. If we do have relatives in diaspora, we are going to be victims of it at some point when we do visit the US or have. U.S. citizens come down here because they're going to come down here with the same attitudes. Eh? They're going to come down here thinking that you know they, they run things and you know whether it be white supremacy or whatever else. So that we are not immune, we are not cut off from it. You know we have to be concerned. I mean, we don't have to lose sleep necessarily. I mean, you don't have to be watching it consistently so you can't sleep. But you have to recognize that what happens everywhere can affect me anywhere. Plain and simple, all right? Guys, any other comments? Hello? Oh, no. Karen, are you back? Oh, 
Turn it back as well. Okay. All right. So the number eight was to live your brand. Right. And we've been more or less talking about that uh, even before Natasha brought it up. And then there's this, there's this bit about leaving a legacy. I know that as individuals, we sometimes get caught up with this whole legacy argument. Eh? Uh, a number of us, I shouldn't say us, a number of people have these fantasies about being great, you know, thinking that to be great means that you have to be, you know, immortalized in stone or something, you know, that long after you're gone, there's going to be a statue, you know, in the entrance to Mary Ann, say, you know, with a Glenda Lambert, you know, picture or something, and, and we see that as, as our legacy. <laughs> or, you know, or we might be at the entrance to, to River Road, have a picture of, of um, um, Cheryl and James, you know, <laughs> as, as being, you know, and seeing that as part of your legacy. Or, 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 or having a building named after you, or, or airport, right? But legacies aren't only in monuments of stone. Right, and as I say, without trying to take away from from Vonnie or all the other people, you know, who I'm sure know the Bible a lot better than I do, you know, there are specific warnings about wanting to be, you know, remembered in bronze and stone and in monuments. Whereas a different legacy is in the impact you have on lives, both. current lives and the lives of those of those to come, right? And if you see a legacy in, in that light, then you don't need the monuments, you don't need the stone, you know, you don't need the pictures or something named after you, but it will always be there. And one of the things that, I mean, I liked a lot of things about, about Dr. Eric Williams, but while he was alive, he always insisted, he didn't want anything named after him, right? You don't want an airport name after him, you know, but of course, since he died, I mean, you know, his, his, um, his, his political people, you know, you know, decided that they would, they would name a, a number of things after him, you know, all of which happened posthumously, you know, because he was very, very, very thing about that. Um, you know, about, he didn't want to have, you know, name immortalized in, in, in that fashion. But the fact that I'm talking about him now, he's a man that died in 1981, <laughs> right? This was 29 years ago. What, what better legacy than an airport that might have been destroyed by Hurricane Ivan or something, you know? Or a poster that would have come down in Maria, you know, when, when they, they, they passed the building in the church at the entrance there, they might have, a back who might have turned and take down Glenda poor picture, you know, I mean, after two months, right? No, I, I hope you guys are, are seeing me. I'm heading. So when you talk about a legacy, there are ways to provide a legacy, right? Um, it may very well be that as the initial board members of this particular CSO, you will have an impact on CSO and development long after anything that bears your name, including your kids, are long gone. So, you know, in terms of leaving a legacy, I am one of those people who really, really believe that it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a monument in stone or bronze, but, you know, there are a number of other ways that, you know, that generations yet unborn will still be talking about what you did or what you stood for or what you are part of. Because remember, it's not about individual glory, it's about being part of something bigger than yourself. And that's what moves people to be part of a CSO because you want to be involved in something that's bigger than you, right? So the CSO is not about you, it's not about Karen, it's not about Kenya, it's not about Nila. Right, and I always expect a round of applause when I say that. Right? Anyhow, yeah. So, so that's that's what I have to say about those ten rules that you guys were supposed to have read but didn't, and that I hope you find the time to read, because you know me, I am going to come up with it in some kind of midterm. You know, you know that. I think, you know, I, think I think you all know me well enough to know that. You know. Um, so can I say something? Please. That um. The point you now make about the way you, different ways to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. And 
you said that, and sometimes there are things in the community that somebody who has engaged young people always try to help them. And for whatever reason, you know, in the community, people see them as less fortunate. This old man in this house is less fortunate, but the way he may help young people or whatever he may contribute to the, to the community, you know, people see it as he just did that. But you know, like some, for whatever reason, sometimes something happened in the community, but he already passed. And you may hear, if John James was here, that or that, that yes, is the way he would have handled this. You know, or you remember he did that and he, and people take these little things and them for granted, mm -hmm. you know, but after it's all said and done, somebody's legacy, it doesn't matter how small it is, and it means something and it contributes in a great way to somebody's life, then you have done well as a person, as an individual and to humanity. That's the point yeah, of yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I want, to, I want to mention something, you know, as you're talking about legacy and, and, um, and, and, and intergenerational stuff. I want, to, I want to pose this question to Ke Kevin. Are you still on, Kevin? Fletcher. Yo, I'm, hello, I'm driving. Oh, sorry, 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 Kevin. But we are here now. Uh, listening and driving. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Okay, right. Well, do, you know, do you know that right. the, first, yeah, the first time you introduce yourself in, in, um, in class, right? And the first time, and not, not the time when you had to apologize for parking that thing next to my car, but other than that, the first time you introduce yourself in class, you know what came to me first, Fletcher? A Paul Keynes Douglas story about old flesh. And the first thing that came to me is I wonder if Kevin is old flesh. Do you know that? Do you guys know that story about old flesh? It was supposed to be some famous headmaster in, in Grada when Paul Keynes was born. Oh. Paul Keynes had right that? Yeah. I know Fletcher. I mean, I don't know him. I know about him. There used to be headmaster. Was he a relative of yours? Mm hmm. Technically, no, but the family is kind of a bit intertwined in a but kind of exactly. So I'm I'm just telling you in terms of the power of a name and legacy because this 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 image because obviously I never met Old Fletch, right? I am a, mm -hmm. I'm a poor Keith Douglas fan from you know long 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 time, right? I used to have all his tapes. I mean, I've been to several of his shows, you know, so. Apart from the people who only know about Tanti Merlin, the Oval, and Tillium, I have, have a fair recollection of most, I shouldn't say most, but a considerable amount of his poetry. And uh, from the time I heard you and you said who you were, and then subsequently when you start asking these kind of problems, because I keep asking myself, you know, I wonder if Kevin related to World Fetch. And it's only because um, Nido mentioned it just now that I thought, you know, I should. I should really ask you, you know. So you know, but you, you know the story, right? About, about Old Fletch, this very famous. Head. No, I never, never, because um, that family and them never really told me about that. Okay, 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 okay. Well, you know me, I always, I always dig up. I'm going to try and see if I dig it up at some point. Mm -hmm. That Paul Keynes um, thing, reference to Old Fletch, you know, and um, I'll... Oh, Paul Keynes probably went. He probably went that school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He did. He, it was. It was. It was our first school. You know. So. So. Oh, no, I'm just. I'm just saying how you know. Okay. Legacies don't have to be only money. All right. So, ideas. So you see, I'm putting it out there. Huh? I miss that. You see how many Grenadians form Trinidad? But but I have I have never denied that I've never denied that I've never denied that and I, I keep telling uh, the, the the two the two most important breaks in my professional career came from Grenadians from Dr. Fergus Nortagua and from Curtis McIntosh out of Carriaco so that I have you know in, in terms of my understanding of the contributions Grenadians made to Trinidad I mean uh, that's, that's never that's never is what I what I do want to remind you though is that a number of the Grenadians who achieve greatness had to come to Trinidad to do it, but I will leave it at that, right? 
Så startede man typer vi var her på. Åh, det er også med det, jeg gør. Ja, det er også med det. For Sparrow, det er Sparrow, det er Sparrow, det er Sparrow. Hallo, hallo. Det er Sparrow, det er Sparrow. They would not have been as I know. I rest my case. That's all I say. That's all I say. I thought he said Uriah's butler. Tubal Uriah Buzz Butler. Okay. Yeah. He had to go to Trinidad to be as impressive as he was in the oil industry, which is where most Grenadians went. I mean, anybody I meet from Point Fourteen, I automatically know they have Grenadian roots. Right? So. Again, because I'm a student of history and because I'm old enough to have lived some of the history, you know, I know that, you know, Trinidad is Trinidad because of Grenada's contribution. I have no I have no doubt about that. I have a problem with that at all. Right. So that is not that's not an issue at all at all at all. At all. It but, is um, suggested that because that Grenada is also responsible for the steel pan. Revolution. It's actually Grenada, not <laughs> Yes, Kenya. That, I like you, Kenya. Yes, Kenya. Stop. Anything, anything positive. I would. I would inside with that okay. one. Mm. Hello. <laughs> we we taking why it's not real. Mm. Kenya. Remember, remember the discussions we had in class about oil down and about roti. Stick in your lane for me, please. Right. Stick in your lane for me. Do not talk about certain things in the same breath. Do not talk about tea pan. Do not talk about roti in the same breath as talking about green. All right? Be very, very careful. As I said, I give Jack his jacket, Jimmy Jim Boots, and Bobby 25 cents, but I don't ever go as far as telling you. Green, I can't take credit for some of these things. All right? Be very careful. Right? We can't put Kuchila in that racket neither. Not even Kuchila. Not even. Well, if you really want to get me on my wrong side, bring up Trinitario Coco, right? Because I know everybody is touchy about that, you know, but trust me, until you get that Coco named after you, you can't talk to me yet. When they have Grenadario, when they have Grenadia, Grenadario Coco, then you can talk to me. But until such time as you stop planting Trinitario Coco here and tell me it's the best in the world, we don't have any discussion. No, I was no saying that because it is rumored come true, that is Grenadians like Buzz and them and other people that went down Trinidad and did stuff, but Trinidad have the thing because they were in Trinidad at the time. I'm uh -huh. just saying that. So it's like how <laughs> it's like how Mul Hodge came up to to Grenada during the revolution and was part of the education revolution. Do you hear Trinidad taking credit for that? Ta da 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 da. So you see, not, uh, but that, you see, that, but for that, somebody who uh, lived in Grenada all her life, I'm just hearing this for the first time, eh? You see, you, you didn't know about Mulhaj's contribution. No, no, not Mulhaj, not Mulhaj. Oh. The part that Grenada is taking responsibility for the pan, you know. No, I know that's not. No, no, man. It's, it's actually it's documented, you know. When I say documented, I'm not saying it is a fact. I'm just saying that people have written and feel that that is Grenadian thing. I, I, I don't want to butt in, but um, no, no, we can move on. You cannot butt in. There, there are certain things that I mean, as I say, you know, I, if you know the cab, so with, uh, with, 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 with Kitchener about Trinidad and Bijan, you know? Yeah, rice. He said, Take a meat out of my rice. You say, as a born Barbarian, I don't like the fight. But when it comes, yeah, that is a really good song. I die for me, right? But you, you, did you ever hear the, the part two to that? When Trini catch Bajan by selling him to get crab on Kalalu, and the crab only going point and out, point and out. You see, see, you all can't argue history and carbs so in the air, so be very careful. There's a part two to that song where Kitch talks about the, Be the Trini inviting the Bajan to have crab on Kalalu. But it's really crap we cook up for him, eh? So you're catching the crab in the back and the crab only going point and out, point and out. He said, when I go back, I go and tell the truth. She must come to Trinidad to eat good food. Good Lord. Crab and kailalu is sweeter than flying fish and kuku. When I go, I go and tell the truth. She must come to Trinidad to eat good food. So, can you? I have so much 
Guapo. 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 We have we have more sophisticated crap put on our head down there. All right. <laughs> and we don't have the, the large mahogany birds, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even German cockroach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> or even German cockroach. You don't have, have German cockroach either. All right. So, so we got the point about legacy. And the fact that there is there is a statue of of um of butler in Faisabad in Trinidad, but I I will tell you that more people know about Butler's contribution than they know of the statue. So the the image the, the monument in, in in bronze and stone or whatever and concrete or whatever it is is made out of is less important than the legacy of Butler. Because once you start talking about workers' rights in Trinidad and Tobago. Butler comes up. When you go to, to Cipriani Labor College and so, there's an image of Butler in there as one of the, you know, one of the stalwarts of the labor movement. So I'm telling you that if your CSO is to have a legacy, it doesn't have to have the biggest office, right? It doesn't have to have the biggest office, it doesn't have to rent a whole section of GC, G, GCNA building to be memorable or to have a legacy. But if coming out of your activities for the next 50 years, CSOs in Grenada set a benchmark for development work in the region, then that would be enough. Distraction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So I hope you guys are seeing exactly where, where I'm heading here. Mrs. Sandy. Mrs. Sandy, have you been with us a long time? Or yeah. you joined? Um, like about 35 minutes. I did not hear anything about the 10 rules of branding. I came in just when you were on the last point. Oh gosh, okay, 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 okay. So but you heard it mm -hmm. talk about the legacy, right? Yep. Cool. Thank you. Mr. Right. Sandy. Bonnie, you wanted to talk to Naja? I will just tell her she has this uncanny ability to remain silent for long. It's a blessing. Yeah, well, it's a blessing sometimes. <laughs> to, what, what he said? To remain silent? Yes, for long periods of time. For a long period of time? Yeah. That's a, that's a good thing or a bad thing? It depends. Some people see it oh. as stupid. Some people see it as a good thing. You never know. No, well, I'm asking. I'm asking it's you, a, sir. It's a good thing in certain countries. I'm asking you. I have no opinion. It's a good thing compared to me. Oh, okay. Okay, okay all right. Yeah, take that and run with it. All right. So <laughs> we have been down the seven, the seven, the ten points. Now, I also gave you a document on the seven points for CSOs. How many people read? that document. Now they say they all shout at once. All right. So I am sensing that you guys have a lot of reading up to do it. Because it's one thing for us to have these rather pleasant conversations, but you must back it up with the actual documentation that we're referencing, right? So let me go over the seven and then we, we we'll just do that. That'll be the last activity for, for today's session. Kenya, if you want to stay on the good side, do not come up with these bits of opinion that you're masquerading as facts, please. All right? I am not going to entertain some of this cross talk. I find you being in a very, 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 very quick to claim things in. All right? Even the Grenadians from St. Vincent. All right, Kenya? So be very careful. 
Be very, 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 very careful. Because people have been hitting me up on WhatsApp with all kind of shady facts <laughs> about so about groovy soccer and raga soccer and pan and you know all the other things that you know are guaranteed to upset me. All right. Next thing you'll be telling me that you all invent rubbish too. All right? Because you know there are two things that are in my head most of the time, yeah? Rubbish, pan, and carnival. So Anytime you try to claim all three of them, you, you already fall out. So let's go on to talk about the seven tips for effective marketing for NGOs. Do you all remember that document? Does anybody remember even hearing about it at least once? Yes, sir. Can you remember the document? Can you remember it? I mean, as the little lady said in Trinidad, you're full of remembrance, man. Yeah, but that's what I mean. But I'm talking about having read it and digested it. So we're going to treat one more time before we finish for today. Okay, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so that, those seven things we're dealing with. Hold one second. Let me find my document. Hold one second. You guys have me. all over the place now to find it. Because Kenya drop a piece of information in media that really had me had me going. All right, so the seven tips for effective marketing for NGOs. And if the first one had to do with keeping up to date on trends. And that is why I took some time before a number of you came on to talk about digital, the digital EC dollar, because that is going to be a major feature of your operations going forward. Um, the governor of the central bank was quite clear that the aiming at a July 30th or 31st, somewhere around there, no, July 20th, sorry, a July 20th launch for the digital EC dollar and this is a, a digital EC dollar, not a cryptocurrency, not a Bitcoin or any of those fancy stuff. It is just another version of the EC cash that you have in your wallet, under your bed, in the bank, and in the credit union. And uh, no CSO is going to be operating in 2022 without a familiarity or a facility for dealing with digital EC. At least not in Grenada, Karakou, and Kiki Martinique, and certainly not within the European, the, certainly not within the community, the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, right, the ECCU. Okay, guys, so in terms of keeping up to date with trends, we have incorporated that into our discussion on CSOs and I have been trying to keep you guys apprised of what's happening with digital currency and the fact that very soon we're going to be looking at transfers, especially transfers in EC dollars between wallets, right? Whether it be a value wallet as I was telling, as I was telling um, Karen earlier, or it's a registered wallet for the people like you guys with lots of money in the banks and credit unions and so as opposed to a value wallet like mine which would be issued by some some intermediate agency which would be for like two thousand dollars no more than two thousand dollars right so that for the rest of us who don't have that kind of money to float around we would at least have a wallet it's just that it won't have more than two thousand dollars at any time right? but the rest of you like the people who run sandy's farm and you know these larger entities would have a registered wallet, you know, and they'll be able to, to operate in thousands of dollars, et cetera, et cetera. And I, for those of you who are on, I was mentioning that very soon your coconut vendor, very soon, your coconut vendor will be able to walk, drive up to your coconut vendor, and while he or she is chopping coconuts for you, you can just do a phone-to-phone -phone transfer of digital currency to pay for it. And I was saying that some years ago when one of my friends said that, you know, that coconut vendors will have 
machine to swipe your card to buy coconut. We laugh, but like everything else, science fiction is catching up with us and it will be a thing of, of beauty to see very soon. Right? So keeping up to date with trends was the first tip. Anybody has any questions, comments on that? Keeping up to date on trends? Right. The second tip was don't only be online. You know, a lot of us are fascinated with Facebook and you know, mm -hmm. and some of the Instagram and what have you. But you also have to have a presence offline because as significant as the coverage is right now, and um, we do know that you know, there's significant coverage in terms of the reach of the internet, um, there are still some sections and segments of the society both geographically and economically, who are not yet part of that everyday connectivity. So if you want to reach them and help them and be part of their lives, you have to have some stuff offline as well. But everything has to be online. Kevin, you're going to say something or you just have to come? Okay. Anybody has any problems with that? Don't only be online. Yeah, quite understood. Cool. I, I was, let me, let me use a recent religious example. I was very annoyed on um, Good Friday that the Western, I like to say the Western world, discussion was the, valid, the validity of the Lord's Supper online, doing it, doing it you know, um, safe distancing. Mm. And forgetting that Majority South, a lot of countries, a lot of countries in Africa had no even access, not, not countries, people. Mm -hmm. They didn't have no access to online. So the, so, so, so the discussion was just very insensitive yeah. and so American, as usual. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, I hear you, I hear you. But just remember that Using the same example that I used before about digital currency. This digital currency will not only be limited to the people who have an online presence. Right. One of the things that the, the governor I'm trying to make, make quite clear that we recognize that not everybody is going to be doing online transactions with digital EC dollars. But in fact, you're going to have a wallet, it might be a card, which has digital right. currency on it. Right. And the right. same way, I don't, know, I don't know how the banks here operate, but in Trinidad, even if you did not have a credit card account and you were going to travel, you could have gone to Republic Bank or one of the banks and bought a yes. student card. So in other words, you never had a Visa card before, but you can get cash now on a Visa card, right? A temporary Visa card that they load up in Trinidad, and then you go to the States or wherever it is you're going on your you know, use that card until the 2,500 or whatever it is run out, and then that's the end of that. <clears throat> so that, that's the way I've been calling people who didn't have, you know, fancy credit card accounts that they would tap up every month, blah, blah, blah. And it's, yeah, it's, prepaid debit card. Is it, is, exactly. And it's the same thing with um, when, when cell phones first, first came out. I mean, you know, you didn't only want to be able to cater for the people who could afford a monthly um, postpaid account. But you also wanted to be able to cater for the people you know, who are going to buy a $10 phone card here, a $5 phone card here, and still be part of this. Well, what at the time was a big revolution, right? The cell phone revolution, which most of you all grew up seeing it. But I mean, there were some of us who were there when, you know, when, we, did, when we had to go to our phone booth and put a quarter into the phone booth and, you know, turn on the knob to, to dial your number and that type of thing. Right? I was privileged to use a dial. Uh -huh. when, you do, when you do this now to young people, they don't see that as using a telephone. No, no they don't understand. Yeah, there's no, there's no, this, you know, in the old days, you'd hold your phone like, pick up your phone like this, and then you dial like that as opposed to the touch to now. All right. So we agree that you don't only need to be online. Then you need to appeal to your audience. You have to know how to. And we've been talking about it a bit yep. for the evening. First off, you have to know your audience. Yep. 
You can't appeal to an entity that you don't know exists. So if you are trying to target the so-called underprivileged and you use an online messaging thing, you know, if we are to agree that they are in fact underprivileged, if that is the correct term to use, then you would hardly expect the underprivileged to have access to this, this type of technology. Now that is a, that's a, that's a debatable point there. Eh? Because I remember when I was, when I was working in a bank, in a, in a development bank, I mean, and we went into some of the poorest areas in Trinidad. And one of the poorest areas in Trinidad in those days, I'm talking about the, the middle 1980s, the late 1980s. When you went into Beatum in those days, the, the common joke used to be that, I mean, you look at it from the outside, it's a shack, eh? you know, the roof kind of halfway slanted down and the door, window doors hanging and one hinge and thing. But when you walk into the place of residence, right, however it looks on the outside, the joke used to be at 12 o'clock always flashing in your face. And for those of you, I mean, for those of you who are wrong in that era, 12 o'clock flashing in your face had to do with the video recorders. When they put on them long then VHS video recorders and things, they used 12 o'clock, you used to come up at 12 o'clock and you keep flashing until you set the time. And no matter how rickety the shack was, when you walk in there, 12 o'clock flashing at you, and you put it on the video, and they have the remote and thing. And if you listen to the Pink Panther Caribbean story about the laughing in the, in the ghetto, so assume that because people live in the ghetto, they, don't have, they have less money than you. There are some people living in the ghetto for other reasons, because they're more comfortable there, or they feel they could get away with whatever they're doing there. You know? and, but, you know, so when you're feeling sorry, you know, you have to make sure you're, you're feeling sorry for the right reason and for the right people. So you need to know your audience. So I'm just saying that just because they're underprivileged doesn't mean they're not going to have access to cell phones. As a matter of fact, they may have a better cell phone than you, right? Um, but as a general rule, you want to know your audience and you want to be able to, to target your audience appropriately using the appropriate technology. So whether it's flyers or loudspeakers, I mean, there was a time when the loudspeaker system was this thing, right? When I lived in Trinidad, I mean, in some of these, especially East Indian areas, fella going around doing that announcements on, the, on a loudspeaker. On top of his old Vauxhall or the old Zephyr, you have these massive horn type speakers, and then they, they Start to relate the debt of so and so and so business from so and so and so and so and so and so and so 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 and then of course political season they'll come around um touting the virtues of their of their candidate of choice okay so you want to be sure that you know your audience and that you use the right means of communication for some a face-to-face -face meeting in a rum shop or outside a rum shop or on top of a rum shop is a good place as well to meet the clientele that you want. When I was a, a agriculture officer in the bank and thing, you know, there are a number of clients that you couldn't see unless you went to the right bar, you know. And that, that's, how you, that's how you made contact with them. You, know? you didn't have to be a drinker yourself, but you had to at least go in the bar to meet them. You have to go where they are. And I'm sure some um, evangelical people as well and missionaries will tell you that you, know, you have to go where the, where the sinners are. So, so I didn't have anything done under the shock factor. Maybe you can explain that. that one, the shock factor. As I didn't have anything done on it. So I don't know, maybe you could probably explain that one for me a bit. I mean, this is after, after appeal to your audience, I mean? Yeah. I didn't have anything done on it. I just have used the shop. You can use the no, shop factor. You do remember we talked about Nicholas Steele. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Oh, oh. <laughs> Natisha? Right. Yes. Natisha or Glenda can forget that. I don't know how Glenda could forget. I mean, no, no. <laughs> it's, a good thing, Charlotte, it's a good thing Charlotte not on this evening because I mean, you understand? Was, I remember she said that was intended for yeah. her. She wanted, yeah. Exactly. Yes, she yes, yes I remember her. that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice cream. <laughs> Guys, do you see that? I mean, you know, it's some as if we're rambling and we're all over the place, eh? but we get stuff done, you know, we get stuff organized. Right? If, you, if you just use the, the circumstances under which you form the schema, Remember, I kept telling you about this wiring in your brain and all that. 
part of my job is to make sure that we have enough schemata so that regardless of the topic, you could pull an example from Nicola Steele's speech to have pink panther culture to a uh, pronunciation of a, of, a, of a first name you know, that ends in Simon, you know, anything that helps you. Have you been doing well, sir? Yeah. <laughs> I will say I'm neither here nor there where that is concerned, <laughs> all right? All right? So neither or neither, all right? It's like, it's like, it's like prefer and prefer. But they're the ones that are a big survey, you know, and they were asking people, you know, what is the correct pronunciation of P-R-E-F-E-R? And one of the fellas get up and say, well, personally, I prefer prefer. All right, so let us, Go on to number seven, is it? Number five now. Number five, yeah, because how the you chop up yeah. is number four, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we are all clear on that, right? As I say, this is how we begin, um, Minister Steele. Okay, five, use infographics. That too is fairly, fairly straightforward. And we had a long conversation about who designed the logo, and you see, so. I'm paying attention while I'm lecturing to you, know, so I, I hope that you know you guys are as well, right? And we had to we, we had to find out how Natisha has still owing this guy for um for the logo. Not so Natisha? Yes, sir, waiting for the price. <laughs> yeah, it went for both season. <laughs> went for both season start, but yes. Sir. I'm fishy waiting for the request, sir. Oh, okay, 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 Because we know everything has value, eh? And there's nothing free out there, right? Cool. So when I catch them clipping, so I to forward it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Six. Now, six seems to be contradictory to two, eh? They said that yes, don't only so. increase your online presence. I mean, I think we can understand. So <laughs> I would say contradictory. Now, what, I'm, what I see between the two of them, while one and you don't forget your person who are not online, the other one is saying you increase it because there are more persons using online service. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then, and then the, message might, the, the, the message might be the same, but the, the, the mode of communicating it will change, right? So what you have in the poster or what is being said on the loudspeaker has to be reformatted for when you're doing an online engagement. Yeah? And we have to also be in tune to, to the times that we live in. So this is what is, you know, the norms right now. So we have to be in tune to that. But not forgetting those persons who are not here there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Right, because I was just going to make the point, if we go to utilize the two tips, um, it brings you a wider cross um, audience in regards to use persons that are not really online savvy and do not have any interest in it, as well as to capture your online um, persons that you know on it every day and whatnot and so forth. So yep. it, it's really to capture everybody point point taken i'm now seeing that there's some um, chapter going on okay all right i'll just i must apologize i tend not to look at the chat box while we actually conducting class and my apologies but but i i think we have a fairly open class here so that we just Put your hand up or just cut in and, you know, talk to me. Michael, welcome. Good afternoon. Hey, Karen, welcome back to you. You missed you miss an a, a interesting session there, where Karen? They, they will tell you about it afterwards. We are certain. Oh, no, no, no. Some of us missed one too, sir, so because there's another thing going on. Certain 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 I, ain't really, I ain't really miss, I ain't really I ain't really miss nothing, man. Because I ain't say nothing, then I ain't miss nothing. Oh, all, okay. when all, you're talking, all when you're talking about me all year. I hear everything, man. <laughs> yeah, you're starting to move like Mrs. Sandy now, boy. You're keeping quiet and just taking notes with the intention of terrorizing us at some point after. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I got I'm stuck. Sure you heard, I'm I sure got you stuck. Heard, I'm sure you heard the Vincentian de defending. Yeah, I, I even saw the Vincentian. That is enough. Vincentian sending um, that is sending people, thing in chat, you know. Send certain people back home. <laughs> I hope they realize that. I hope they realize that. That in the attempts to defend Grenada, they could well find themselves doing a little island hop straight back to Union Island, all the way back to Bermuda. But anyhow. But 
thank you for the marketing because only I hear you saying that, that the best at a leap you get in your career is from Grenada and you call the three person's name. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Good marketing for us, man. Yeah, yeah. But I have I mean I try I try my best to be genuine. I mean I call a spade a spade a shovel a shovel. Right? And I can tell you that one of the major shovels I have is that Grenada did not invent bank. All right, so there you go. <laughs> I see you all like the tickle me. I think you all you just like the tickle me because you know that there are some things that I can't get past my crow. You know, sticking my crow a little bit. All right. So we have number five, we, we, then number six, and number seven. The literal and direct. Okay, well, I may not be the best advertisement for that. Because I tend to, I tend to like to bring examples from all over the place, and not necessarily be direct in terms of giving you a definition for marketing. But I justify it by saying that my interest in neuroscience and so says that if you develop this schema, you develop this schema, the learning is more, not only more vivid in terms of how you're able to remember that Sheridan said something about ice cream or that Patricia said something about. Minister Steele, right? But that Glenda got a G for, for that particular thing. You know? All of that helps us, you know, in terms of how we implant that information and not only how we implant it, but how we retrieve it. Because you know, the thing about learning is it's one thing to put stuff in your head, right? But another thing to be able to recall it, right? And that's where mnemonics come in, right? You know, the mnemonics are, they have like the first letters of the, of the word, you know, to make up a, a, a a memory aid, right? That's what that's what mnemonics are. All right. So our interests, as I said, I am not one of those people who can vouch for the, the, the benefits of being literal and direct because I believe in examples from from real life. But there's a place for this as well. So, so Naja is speaking to you. Naja, sorry. She, she puts this document on the screen. She. She wants to share her document with us. Please do. I'm not, I'm not hearing you, Glenda. I said the same document you're reading from. I said we, she didn't realize we had it last time, so you're just going through it with us. Oh, okay. oh, oh sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. You have it, you have it on, your, on your device, either pre-FedEx or post-FedEx. Um, you know, nobody don't, like don't, 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 don't even go there. It has arrived. It has arrived. I know, I know. We can tell when you have a new when you have a new device, you know. You see what kind of thing come up, you know what I mean? And, and, and you always have difficult you always have no, 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 I'm not and I'm not even using it. I'm using my old device so you so you understand. That's why we're not here that's why we're not here all your kids this evening. Because when you have your new device, you don't even know the beauty mic on it. So don't let me expose your business. Right? No, 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 baby no, today's a quiet day because baby's sleeping. Oh, okay, okay. You know yeah. we we have we have Uncle Kit in the house. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, whether it was pre FedEx or post FedEx, I gave you this documentary. So I'm I'm reading from a document that everybody has somewhere on one of their many devices. All right. Okay, dogs. So what? What next? Remember, I said that that would be the. So um, one aspect of it, the same be literal and direct. Um, you did mention mm -hmm. last time was to get to the point. You said um, be direct, get to the point. You know, get to the um root so you can understand what the, the solution is. You can get a solution very clear. Yeah, but I, I'm 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 su suggesting that I don't totally agree with that. At least not at all times, because mm -hmm. sometimes you need to set the stage. You know, um, mm -hmm. provide a framework. I mean, if you just jump into a conversation and see that, you know, everybody from St. Vincent likes to make confusion, that won't go down well, right? Mm -hmm. But if you start off by seeing that there are some people from them mm -hmm. who come to me and want to imply that trade agents didn't do certain things, that, that, that is different. So that is less direct. But if people know who they are, right? And whether they appear on screen or not, 
right? Whether they are on screen or not, they know who they are and they know what we're talking about. So that there are times when, you know, you don't want to be always that direct. You, know, you don't want to always come out and say, you know, we know somebody get new equipment. No, you want to say, you know, that we have noticed that, you know, over time, certain people, you know, have been more vocal or less vocal, you know, or have attempted to log on with pieces of equipment that we're not familiar with and that they're not familiar with either and they don't know how to mute. <laughs> so that would be my... Are, are, you talking about, are you talking about me, sir? No, 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 Michael, no, Michael. Your, your uh -huh. case is a matter of conscience. No, 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 this is, this, this is a matter of conscience. This is a matter of Indeed, he have a new piece of equipment, you know, <laughs> sir? I have nothing. <laughs> We I have nothing on my conscience. You keep saying that you know, I mean, that we need to be humble. You don't want people exactly. sharing the equipment. You know, other people got their material from FedEx. They cleared themselves. They organized themselves, and all they did was come on and you know. And so even cool. Michael equipment speak fine French, you know. Yeah, I, I you know. I ain't get my equipment yet. <laughs> she said it's it's the last thing you know in a warehouse in Miami. Oh dear. Oh, there, 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 there. Yes, to reorder and claim and then reorder. Yep, yeah, but I hope there's no um, Floyd type looting in Miami. Yeah. But I go hide still. I go hide in the meantime. I go hide still. <laughs> so, you we said to be literal and direct, and uh, as I said, you know, that, that can go either way. Um, I, there obviously are times when you want to be literal and direct. And the other times when you want to, you know, soften the blow, introduce things uh, with a little background so that people know why you are how you are. Because you know? people might hear that, you know, a certain person got a G, but they wouldn't know why the person got a G or what they did to get a G, right? And if you just see it, it will look as if it's just victimization, right? Um, because you all realize you haven't heard me say anything about what grade Miss James got in. You know, because I, I publicly said in class that it would be difficult for her to pass, even pass. So the fact that she's still here means, you know, something would have changed since then. All right. So those were the seven, the literal and direct, all right? So one of the things we learned is... So, um, like, uh, sorry? It has its place. 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 I mean, there are times when I mean, if 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 it is to avoid a confrontation, if it is within a, a limited time period, like say in a meeting, a meeting forum, you know, if you all have your first board meeting, I mean, you don't want to be all over the place, right? You want to be literal and direct and say, you know, that you know, we think um, Mr. Maxime deserves, you know. Fifteen thousand dollar bonus or something like that. You want to be direct with that. You don't want to beat all over the bush and say this is why he is it. Just come out and say it, right? I'm <laughs> Karen. I have said nothing. Nothing. I just thought it was a very literal and direct advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> Seem as if it was well received by the audience, you know. I, it was received in silence. That's what I mean by well received. I think, I, think, I, think, I think what most people did is just they just ignore that last statement. They just went merely on the book. Yeah, I could I couldn't ignore it though. <laughs> All right, but but the thing with me is that I am consistent there eh? and I'm genuine, so I'm gonna bring it up again, you know, in other ways. Between now and the and the, and the official launch of the um, of the of the CSO. All right, guys. So yes, remember, yes. you need to read. You need to read over those documents. I'm not sharing these documents with you only for the fun of it. Eh? Um, so let's let's hope because I have two more to send to you between tonight when I do the recording and. So I didn't remember seeing you send this one yet. Was it by email? The, the seven tips. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. You all got it. It's not on your chat. I oh, It's on your chat, oh. right? Okay, yeah, I can yeah, yeah, yeah. see it. So much what, I, what, I do, what I can do, though, is I can... And I'm already downloaded, but I didn't see that. I, can, I guess I, I will send it again. When, okay. I send it, when I send the other two tonight or tomorrow morning. 
Thank at you. four o'clock or whenever to go. To get around to go. That's consult consultancy time. That's the time Glenda is usually up after two in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not two. It's like it. after three. That's my money mm. making time, you know. So I hope you guys are making money at that time as well. They don't understand how much ideas that flow at that time in the morning, you know. Exactly, because remember when it's four o'clock here, it's nine o'clock in Holland and, and Europe, eh? and, and mostly people yeah. who I, I'm trying to employ me are uh, moving about. So. And back in the days when I used to, have to communicate with China, I mean, I had to do it in the night, like now, so when I time for nobody here on the phone. All right, so there you go. There you go. There you, go. There you, go. you understand? I'm sorry, you said that Bonnie had to sh share something. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Bonnie, can you take a, a two minutes and tell them what your experience was? I mean, although it's not directly related to marketing, I, I, I thought it was interesting that, um, that you shared it because you, you did not see it as, as affecting your own personal brand. Oh, by the way, for the rest of you who joined it, I have, I have a, not a confession, but I have a statement to make. The only reason I know about this is because um, I'm friends with Bonnie on Facebook. Um, Bonnie, who introduced you? You invited me or I invited you? I, I think you invited me. All right, because I saw something came up that we had a mutual friend post, and I think that's where that's that's the only reason I knew on Facebook anyway. So, okay. Yeah. So okay. that is the way Facebook market their product to where eh? they but introduce the people that, that they realize you associate I, with, and they say friend. That is why I tell you that even though it's a marketing thing, and it, this has nothing to do with marketing per se, I still thought it was important for you to hear Bonnie's um, story. So Bonnie, in five minutes or less. So 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 so, so friends. <laughs> The, I, I came out of a class, maybe the last class we did, or maybe the class before, I can't remember now. Of, um, last week Tuesday, I think. Last week Tuesday, CSO marketing. I went, I continue online in a Zoom, in a Zoom um, presentation. And then after that, my body began to react differently, funny, strange. Well, I didn't take it on because, you know, you know sometimes, those things happen. But by later in the night, it, it started to get so so painful, my, my stomach really. And you know, it was just difficult. It was just extremely difficult to function, to breathe, to really be how I am. I thought about should I go to the hospital, but uh, I didn't thought it was that bad at that time, so to speak. But the truth about the, about, the, about the matter that we didn't sleep the night. We didn't sleep the night. Um, um, body aching, chest want to come out of my, of, of, of my body, nothing coming out of my body, and it was just a terrible ordeal. So by around 6 the next morning, I told my wife, I think we should, um, we should, call the, we should, we should go to the hospital. But even after I told her that, it seems, again, you know, I, I just felt the spirit of the Lord says, you know, you don't need to go to the hospital. And I'm big on medicine, by the way. I mean, I, I, I like the convergence. And, and the spirit said a strange thing. I thought it was strange then. To say, call my, my former senior pastor to let him come across and let him pray for me. Now, at that time, my body was extremely weak. I could hardly pick up my phone and make a call. I had to cancel the, the Ministry of Youth 9 o'clock meeting, so, so, so it was real bad. But then I finally was able to pick up the phone and, and call, and call um, the pastor, and then he came across, he and his son. And he came across, he and his son, and... I explained to him what was happening in real pain, I mean extreme pain, and then he decided to pray. He prayed for me for 15 minutes about that time. And in that prayer, I heard him say to the effect, you know, waiting on, waiting on, almost like waiting on going out of consciousness, so to speak. I heard him say to the effect, that bug that is in that body, come out now. And then I also heard him say at one point, and show that, wait, what he said, 
Lord bring relief to that body. And as he finished praying, immediately after he would have finished praying, all my strength, I mean, I just literally got up, right? I literally got up and all my strength returned to me. I mean, it was, and I explained to it like this, it was like driving a car, the car is in D, and you, you choose to go the other direction and you just, you just put the car in reverse with it, stopping and, and then putting it in reverse. And it was an interest, interesting experience for me. And I don't usually share those kind of stuff, <laughs> as, as Steve may suspect. But I thought it was important to share it for people to understand that we, you know, in spite of there is a higher, there is a higher power. There is a higher power for us to understand. And that in sharing it, I was surprised, very surprised. In sharing it, I, I, I got, I mean, so much shared and comments and likes, I was totally surprised, right? But it was also part of our own personal revelation too. Hey, what was the personal revelation, XVF? That I spend my time doing that, praying for people. Um, matter of fact, I was at a hospital the other day, somebody called me and told me the person who was sick to death, they back up and well and everything. And I take those things for kind of almost as part of what I do. But I've never, in the praying, in the going away, people hardly do the, the same for me. <laughs> and it felt you know, it, it, it felt strange, you know, it felt graceful. And it had me in reflection, and I'm still in reflection, how sometimes the, the things that we take for granted, and even life, you know, thinking that I would have been good, come from good to bad, and then just return back. And what lessons for us, that um, even as people, that we could be seeing all of us here now. And, and five minutes from now, we could be hearing something different. So I, I thought that was important to share. And again, let me just share that with you, Steve. I mean, why not? I, I grew up, I grew up, my wife tell me, <laughs> my wife told me when she meet me that I show off. I, I had some show off treating me. Um, I, and so I spend a lot of my time trying to ensure that I doesn't come across arrogant and boastful, right? And so I'm very careful with these things. And that's the reason sometimes I talk in class a lot, but when I catch myself, I pull back. So I, I do struggle with those, with, with those things. But um, part of the lesson from that experience is the issue of humility too, you know? You know, just chill, chill. I mean, you go today, tomorrow could be something else. So don't take life. You know, we could take life in this arrogant, careless way, but just, just, just chill. You know, and that's part of the big lessons for me. Uh, but thanks, Bonnie. As, as I said, I mean, I, I kind of figured out that you know that this is not the type of thing you would talk about all the time. Uh, and unless you came back to class, you know, you, you never brought it up. I mean, if, if I hadn't seen that Facebook post, I would not have known the following Tuesday that you were in class and you, know, you didn't say anything about it. Uh, and I only brought it up today because I thought that. If you had gone to the extent of sharing it on Facebook, then it wouldn't be, you wouldn't right. be like, upset that right. you, know, not, you didn't consider it as private again. You know? um, right. If you had just told me, I would, I wouldn't come. You know, I wouldn't come and. Um, right. It, it, it also has to do with how how we operate. I mean, not just as a class, but as as, as people too. Um, it is very very difficult to always be to use Glenda's term, have the emotional intelligence to be always, you know, right. you know understanding. Um, you know, I have seen most of you in this class grow. I mean, you, you, all, you all probably won't know it, but I mean, from my first experience with you to now, I've seen a number of you grow. I'm not, I'm not talking growing spiritually or anything like that. I think melodramatic like that. Let's, let's grow in terms of your ability to expand your perspective. To be able to pick, literally pick nonsense out of these little schema that I keep drawing with you, you know what I mean? So that, that it wouldn't take much for you to pull an example from agriculture 
or from Carnival or from being in the hotel school or in your in your case being a pastor you know being in a, in a religious religious um, framework and I, and I think that that's why the joy is of of communion you know uh, this this whole class exercise is a communion right is we are community we are sharing ideas on a particular topic right I am bringing my particular flavor of, of um, experiences. You all are coming with your experiences. And I'm even getting experiences from as far as sentence, right? So we have all these experiences that we share it, right? And I think nothing justifies this class more to me than to see that kind of interaction. Because at the time when we designed this course, I mean, it could easily be a correspondence course, as far as I'm concerned. I could have write it courses, send it out here, and every three months you write an exam, and hopefully you pass, and you call that a day, right? So it's all meant to say that I appreciate you guys. I appreciate what you're trying to do. Um, I appreciate the fact that you take time, because you literally take time every Tuesday and Tuesday for us to meet up. Uh, and I hope we can continue sharing in that same vein. I hope you all remain comfortable enough with me to say, you know, Steve, this is making sense. Every hour and a half, we come and talk. I ain't really seen nothing about it. Please do, right? I'm not thin skinned. I've been around a long while, you know, so I don't think everything is perfect, right? So if there's anything, whether you want to bring it up in class or not, if each of you have my private, you know, WhatsApp, just make sure that we stay on the right track, you know, that we, that that mission other, that thought is very really accomplished. The other side to that, Steve, is that. I don't know about other persons, you know. I hear people say the more you, the more you, it's like the more exposed you are, it's almost like the less you know kind of thing, whatever how that is. Yeah, 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 which is true. And this class, I mean, I mean, I've done a lot of things in my life already. And I realize I don't know a lot of things. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> so it, it, it has created a certain sense of humility to by you know sometimes we think we have it together but but i mean if it wasn't for this class in in a few months so many things that i thought i should have known and i i, I just don't i just didn't know <laughs> yeah. you know you know so I, I really keep that in perspective yeah and the thing is that if if we all knew it we wouldn't have to come to the class anymore <laughs> Yes, by definition, yeah, by definition, once you sign up for the class, it's because you yourself knew that there might be a little more to learn, right? And the reason why I'm doing it is because I feel there's a little more for me to learn too, right? Even though, you know, I, you know, I've been around a couple of times, but I've never lived your life. I've never right. spent right. three lives in this class, right? I've never had Ramos' experience. I've never had Glenda's experience. I've never had Prince's experience. I've never had Michael experience. I mean, I've never been the most popular man in any parish. Right, so I can't come to Michael. You know, what I mean, when when Michael says that, and I don't hear people in the class cussing and crying around and saying, "What's your is he talking?" That tells me something. That tells me something that me that. So at some point, can. when I grow up, I'll be able to tell people. Michael I'm Legacy covered. Huh? Steve, can be covered. Steve, that can be disputed. That can be disputed, Maxim. It it is too late to dispute it now. When you yes. I, nobody I would like to say something to Vonnie and to all of us here. You know what? In the midst of all of this, we are all human. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, you know, we go through things. And the important thing is knowing where we are and what we need to go forward. And Vonnie knew at that point in time he needed somebody to go forward. True. So we all humans. We go through different things at different times. And we are not better than each other. We may be experiencing different situations at different times. Because today you might be up and I might be down or vice versa. But we are not better than each other. And we all human beings. And we all err as well as we all do the right things at times. But Vani, I am happy to know that you know you're in the land of the living. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All, all. And so one more thing I must say, talking about your class, I would have taken some of CSO into computer and also into <laughs> critical thinking and was able to relate and communicate effectively, you okay. understand, okay. thereby obtaining and telling the rest afterwards a G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a G too. No, no, no. I was about to tell you 
um, Mr. Fletcher hand hand was up, but then I saw it came out. So I thought I thought he was yeah I thought I thought his hand was up too. I think I saw it. Let's 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 have him first now and then and then and then you said. Kevin, what were you what were you about to say? No, mine is on a different topic. So let someone else go first and then I'll finish. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay, all right. You see what I tell you about Fletch? Go ahead. <laughs> Neither. Go ahead, Nina. No, I wasn't saying anything. I just noticed his hand was up. So I was oh, just... okay, okay. So you're being, you're being helpful. So you're after being... that, that's about Mr. Fletcher. When he says something, he's, he has facts to back it up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not too sure about the facts, but you have an opinion to back it up. I'm saying the facts together. So let's see. Yeah, Kevin, go ahead. Sorry. Um, did, did you attend you in Trinidad? Yes, I did. Did you ever know a Dr. Michael Boburn or so? Yeah, of course. Huh? Actually, of course, yeah, yes, I did. A Grenadian, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, something you said when you were using the story about um, Paul King's Douglas and so on, but mm -hmm. I've noticed for years now, Grenada is a country that really don't really appreciate its history. Oh, Because, well. like, for example, um, I guess because a lot of it may have been colonially rooted, Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that Grenada really takes much pride in. Even even the PRG era and two, mm -hmm. they don't really bother with a lot of it because, like, the first governor general of Antigua, mm -hmm. he was born in Grenada and his wife, mm -hmm. and they lived, they married in Grenada. They, the first child was born here. The first one of uh, governor general of Saint Vincent was also a Grenadian, and mm -hmm. even when you look at certain people like in in the past in Britain like that, um, pianist um, Leslie Hutchinson, um, who they have done documentaries on and so on. Grenada really don't embrace that part of it. I guess it's because of the social stigma um, associated with certain people or just the part that, I don't know if they feel it's these persons and them achieve too much of a, a life that they don't consider them Grenadians anymore. But, 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 if, but I just if noted Jennifer that. Austin, I mean, people celebrated Jennifer Austin. They still celebrate Jennifer Austin as the first Black Miss World. You know, yeah, I, I, people, I, do, I, people do that. But um, when you look at, like, for example, a lot of Grenadians who like made it abroad. Mm -hmm. In like other countries, you would see places like in a museum or, oh, okay. or even within and so on that you would see something to explain in Grenada, there is none of it. Okay, I know. And there have been a number of persons who have filled these kind of roles, but it's true that some of them may have had some very dark past that they're not pleased about, but it's just that we don't really appreciate. So that's why like when you talk about um, Kings Douglas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's only probably a few persons, well, persons of my era and a little lower, or if they hear the parents say it, but mm -hmm. even some of them know, younger ones nowadays don't even know who that is. Ah, boy, right. but, but let me tell you something. I see what Paul, is. Paul has had an, uh, an, an impact on, on, on Trinidad culture, on, on, on Trinidad awareness. Um, he used to run a very successful talk tent. At a time when everybody was interested in Caribbean, so I'm talking about in the Caribbean season, you would have a talk tent and have a lot of um, up and coming artists, um, even those that you know drifted off into into rap so and, and other forms of um, of oral you know oral tradition. And so I remember one particular fellow, Miguel Miguel Brown, right, who was on campus in my my, my era, and he would have gotten his first break. On a, on a talk tent with, with, with Paul Keynes Douglas. And as I said, the, the thing with, one of the things you have to understand to it in terms of artists and, and especially performing arts, you have to admit or at least understand that you're talking about a population that is 10 times the size, or 13 times the size of a eh? So when you host a show in Trinidad and you get you know, a small, a very small percentage of the population that come out. You're still doing better than if you got that same percentage performing here. Now, I'm not making excuses for Grenada, don't get me wrong. But in terms of 
it's the same type of magnet that will draw a Trinidadian artist to go to the New York, to go to New York or to go to the States for recognition and for financial reward. It's the same thing happens, you know, in a step from Grenada to Trinidad. Even the great Lord Kitchener, late Lord Kitchener, said that, you know, when he went to London in 1948, it was because he was, he was selling out shows in Trinidad but not making any money. <laughs> you know, when 20 fellas come in a rum shop and sing and say, hey, some good and thing, you know, probably put $10 in the hat. You don't, you don't mind a family up for that. Whereas you can go to London, you know, and, and make a different kind of, kind of future. So I'm not excusing the fact that the um, Indians may or may not know the history, but I'm just saying that as a Trinidadian, as a Trinidadian with Martinican, Montserratian, and Kittishan roots that I know about, I'm sure I have Grenadian roots somewhere too, right? Um, it is one very, very small region, and anybody who, has, who comes from Grenada, Tobago, Trinidad, and yes, Kenya, St. Vincent, will know that there is an interconnection, a very strong interconnection, and, and Barbados, sorry, I forget Barbados, because my paternal, my maternal grandfather was Bajan. So that none of us really have pure stock, if you know, if, it, if, it, if any such thing exists. So that we, we must be appreciative of the contributions that um, Canadians have made. I mean, I always knew Stalin was Canadian, right? I always knew Sparrow was Canadian. I did not know Valentino was, was Canadian until I moved to Grenada. And when Stalin came for, for, for um, recuperation and thing, Valentino's name came up, right? Um, Mystic Prowler was, was, was from St. Vincent and, and one type, so Crown and Trinidad and so So even though we may have the little arguments now, I might, you know, appear to get on, you know, as if, you know, as if I'm you know, specifically seeing what is Trinidad and what is it. There's a, there's a West Indianist to all of this that you really cannot isolate individual islands. These little rocks peeping out of the, of the ocean, of the Caribbean Sea, you know, to, to really, see that you know with some definitive strength you know, it was created here and nowhere else you know that's, that is that's a non-starter the oil boom the, the oil boom i remember trinidad was producing oil since the turn of the century previous century long before oil was discovered in the middle east oil was being produced in trinidad so you had a whole lot of people Grenadians, vincent and everybody going down to trinidad following that oil boom you had Bajans going to panama and, and Trinidadians going to Panama and Grenadians going to Panama to build the Panama Canal. You had Bajans and Grenadians and Vincentians and Trinidadians going up to Bahamas when Bahamas was now creating their police force, right? So that it's a very small region. I mean, we like to think of it as, as being big, you know, I mean, I, I'm from a bigger country, I'm from a smaller country, but the rest of the world, we're just little specks in the, in the Caribbean Sea down there, you know, and I, I hope I hope that you're wrong and that and that Grenadians really do have, you know, a collective sense of the history. But if they don't, um, I can tell you with certainty that they ain't gonna be no different to Trinidad or Barbados or well, I, I wouldn't include Jamaica in that. I think Jamaicans have a very strong sense of our, of the history and, and how they you know how they they, they protect their, their culture and so. But if if that is the case, then we collectively whether through our CSO or other development work, have to find ways to remind the public that, you know, that those who have gone before us and, and whose legacy we want to promote, that, they, um, that we find a way to, to do it, right? So I would like to see something, you know, I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. a lot this afternoon. Having the knowledge that Kevin would have a lot of information because Kevin is a historian, huh? Oh, I didn't know that. And yeah, and going through this course, I say probably is a big and I opener for him. So as you said correctly, probably he can use this avenue, you know. Yeah. And and see what can be done because I know he has a lot. I mean, the first time I, I went with Kevin to see some of the things, I was like amazed. I wasn't even aware that those things were there, you know. Yeah. Right. And then so I, there's I, a lot of information there, but and he even has more from what I understand. Yeah, and but I. It is very difficult for me to conceptualize a development worker, and I'm saying this with all in all honesty, 
who does not have a sense of history? Because if you do not have a sense of the work that art would have done back in the, remember I tell you, I used to work with Sandra and um, By when Byron was, Byron was the director and Sandra was the, sec was the like, secretary, right? So that my background with art goes back a million years, right? Yeah, you used but, to have um, Sandra, James working there too as well. I don't remember who that was, but I remember when Sandra, because when, when Sandra came back from, when I told Sandra in Trinidad, so that by the time she came back here, then went to Holland, came back with her masters, you know, so I, yeah. it was really, but the point I'm making is that to be in development and to, think, and to be concerned about people, it's hard to do that in a vacuum. If you don't have a sense of history, if you have no idea the wrongs that you're trying to correct, so that's what we do in development. We're trying to correct some wrongs of the past, but it'd be from slavery, from um, discrimination, from you know, all those kinds of issues, all those kinds of human rights issues. If you have no sense of history, then it's very difficult for you to just jump in cold and say, no, I'm here to help people. Help people from what, or for what, or towards what, if you have no idea of the thing. So I'm glad that you, that you kind of spill the beans on Kevin. I'll be finding ways to interact with him outside of this, these circles in my and, and we shall see. Any other comments? Anybody else? Kenya? Can I saw the vision in you a long time ago. Sorry, I missed that, Kevin. I saw the vision in you a long time ago. <laughs> Thanks for admitting. Because I can sell mahogany birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, maternal, my, my mother is a Kamabacha. So that should tell you everything. One of them Kamabachas is from Barbados. Anybody else? Any closing comments? Kenya, we have been referencing you so much this evening. Kenya asked, she's in another meeting. So she's kind of in between. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any other comments? Anybody with old or new equipment? Borrowed equipment? Cell phones with no data? I'll pretend I'll hear, uh, I did not hear certain things. Any comments, Nadja? Before we close off for today? No. Okay. No, no. All right. Okay, guys. So once again, thanks for putting up with me for two hours and 15 minutes. I mean, that must have been really hard. But as you, I'm sure you can tell, I enjoyed myself. Um, I really do enjoy interacting. Yeah. With you. Right. So I will post the recording later on a couple of the documents that try reading the part change, right? Um, this is true for everybody. You know there are times that you have to be direct, I heard it. What, what was the term? Be direct and literal. I'm literally and directly trying to read the notes from please, All right? Yes, but so normally, normally when you're sending notes in Gmail, we read, but these days you're sending it in WhatsApp, so I'm a bit lost. I thought it was something else, or maybe I didn't see it. I don't know, but I didn't get it, or I didn't pay attention. You mean an email? Yes, you know, in the early you used to send all notes in the email, so I get used to getting things through the email. Okay. So you're to blame. Yeah, of course. It's not your new equipment. Of course. That your car used. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I understand that. It is yeah. not lost on me at all. I understand that. Yeah. Excuse me. So you understand you have to know how to appeal to your audience. You have know? to know my audience. Exactly. <laughs> every, audience, every audience tech savvy, then you approach them up with a If they have to get emails, then send emails. So understanding your audience is very important, sir. If, if not, I'll get up. I'll get a slate and write it on the slate when it depending on the on the audience I deal with. But so she may not know what a slate is, you know? Sorry. Kevin will know, but she may not know. That's true, that's true, that's true. But well, I have time now to, to send that out. Look in the ink pot on my desk to find out about that, to do about that. 
So people. Well, it was a very good session and thank you so very much once again. Hey, I enjoy myself. Thanks a lot. Bye. Good, good night, night, everybody. All right, good night. Good night, good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks a lot, Karen. No problem, man. Anytime. Okay. All right.